For me, it isn't about leading an organization as the managing director. It's really leading an organization that's making a difference in the lives of people. You know, for me, when I think about my own experience and the experiences of many, many other immigrants, um, it isn't about the immigration process. It is really about changing their own lives, you know, leveraging their prior education and skills, changing the lives of their children, and really legacy building and contributing to their new chosen countries. So for me, the question isn't about, you know, how do I feel about leading a social enterprise? Um, you know, WES is an organization that is changing lives. So almost 20 years ago in Ontario, generally Canada, but we used to get mostly, you know, almost about 53 to 60% of all immigrants coming to Canada, coming to Ontario. I was a former provincial bureaucrat and also the provincial lead on a federal provincial territorial working group on what was called access to professions and trades. And what we watched from a government perspective is the number of immigrants who were coming to Canada based on a federal selection process. And then once they came to um, our province, Ontario, that in fact, uh, the doors were shut almost immediately. Um, most of the decision makers, so you know, employers, post-secondary institutions, licensing bodies, didn't know how to evaluate these credentials from other countries. They didn't know how to take, uh, you know, a bachelor's degree and say, well, in Canada, here's what it looks like. And that was a significant barrier. So you ended up with people coming, uh, expecting to come in and immediately work and found that even their academic qualifications were not recognized, let alone the experiences that they were bringing, you know, high level, many years of experiences. So at that point, uh, my role in terms of the, the lead for access to professions and trades, we had a conversation federally and with my provincial counterparts. And what we thought we would do in Ontario because of the number of immigrants is start a pilot project. We knew that there were organizations, some in um, Canada and you know, some in the US, uh, evaluating credentials. We knew that uh, the barrier of evaluating credentials had diminished or been reduced. And that in fact, these assessment services were assessing documents, giving a North American standard and that doors were opening. And so what I did as part of the work that I was doing is the minister who was very progressive at that point, Isabel Bassett, uh, made the decision that, yeah, we should put an RFP out and let's go out and see whether we could find such a service pilot test and see whether we could reduce barriers and have more people entering their occupations. And West's demonstrated the highest quality of standards, had already been around almost 20 years in the U.S., um, had what I would call the gold standard, I know had quality processes where documents were ensured not to be fraudulent and had international recognition. And so, you know, when the RFA was put out, uh, Wes came in, uh, won the contract, and West Canada was established. Now, since West Canada was established, we basically have become a strategic partner, advisor to a number of decision makers, stakeholders, etc. So we work very closely with all the post-secondary institutions across Canada, uh, colleges, universities, some private career colleges. Uh, we work closely with all the regulators. 
um, again across Canada, you know, uh, most of the engineering occupational bodies are partners with West as well as health regulatory bodies. We work with employers in terms of the recognition of the reports that we're providing. So we basically have moved from reducing a barrier to opening doors to recognition by these decision makers. And you know, that's one of the things that I talked about is that the idea is the impact, changing lives of people who have come here to contribute. And we have moved that forward by the recognition that's taking place by all our strategic You know, it's, it's really interesting and sometimes I wonder that, you know, life has its moments and uh, you know, I call it serendipity. But when I actually uh, established as a government bureaucrat, um, West Canada uh, 20 years ago, I never anticipated that I would be coming back 20 years later, our 20th anniversary to lead this organization. I'd never even thought about that. That was not the pathway that I had anticipated. Actually, I feel like as though, you know, it was kismet, if we know the meaning of kismet, faith, uh, because, you know, uh, what we haven't talked about is that when I worked in government and basically uh, discussed this with the minister and the deputy minister on the importance of setting up an organization like West, it was very personal to me. Uh, many of you who know me might have heard the story of um, when I came as a young teenager with my parents from East Africa, my um, father was an accountant owned businesses. We spoke English. We basically were brought up in a British school system. Came to Canada, came to Ontario, and he couldn't find a job. And he ended up working in a golf club, you know, basically uh, picking up wet towels and, you know, just menial uh, labor um, just to make sure that we were okay for a little bit. And so that had a huge impact on me in terms of what I was going to do to make a difference. And I did that in government. And so when uh, Tim Oven, whose uh, shoulders I stand on, who basically was the former uh, managing director before me, uh, basically, uh, you know, set Wes up and he retired. And, and I had an executive search firm um, who said, would you like to be considered? And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. So the question is, you know, how do you feel about coming back to an organization that I set up that I hadn't really anticipated coming back to? And I see it as full circle. You know, I started the process in terms of wanting to make a difference. My dad would have expected it, has passed away. I did what I needed to do in government in terms of trying to influence policies, uh, designing programs like bridging programs, etc. And I'm here at West working at the grassroots level, continuing to have an impact as the leader of this organization with very passionate people who work in this organization. I'm actually honored and humbled to, to be here 20 years later, to be leading this organization, to take it to the next level. So as I said, it's kismet, serendipity, right time, right place. So really in terms of, I think that five years is a short time span, especially since we have just gone through a significant pandemic that continues. We don't know what the situation is going to look like. And 10 years feels short term to me uh, anyway, uh, when I think about the fact that West has been around for 20 years. So, you know, let me answer the question slightly differently. What I see the future of West being. So for me, what has happened is that you have you know, complete chaos, at least for the short term, around our supply chain, uh, the structural changes in our labor market. You know, we had the traditional sources of global mobility. People would come in, would assess the documents, they would either get into their former occupations or they would move into something else. Well, it isn't traditional global mobility anymore. 
and we don't have the same labor market. And we have digitization, technology, everything that basically has come into place fairly quickly. So what I see the future of West being is as follows. We started with assessing credentials. We are excellent at that. What I'm starting to see is that employers and others are saying academic credentials and assessments are great, but what about skills? What about experience? How do we assess the experience that people bring? What are the tools that we have in place? That's one. Two is that the occupation that people were used to, traditional occupations, are quickly disappearing with artificial intelligence, robotics, or whatever else. So how do we make sure that we leverage the academic credentials and skills that people bring and pivot it to what the new labor market looks like, the new occupations? And so, you know, what are the kind of, of skills uh, and assessment tools that we need to put in place? So, you know, what West started up with uh, the gold standard for doing academic assessments, what we have started to do, and I hope that's the future in terms of skills assessments and tools and looking at you know, where the new jobs are going to be so that we can support people to pivot from what their current occupation is to what the new occupations could be. How do you basically take the skills that they have right now and use it in new ways? So upskilling, so you know, as an example, if an individual came here as an engineer, and they have certain skill sets, you know, a project management, a disciplined way of working. And if the technology industry is going through significant growth, which we know, how could you pivot the skills to go into technology? Health professionals with our demographic uh, profile and the aging profile, you know, they might not be able to go into being a nurse. Uh, could they develop health apps? Could they basically go into a workplace doing interprofessional uh, uh, work so that it's very different? So, you know, I, I sort of have an aspiration as to what the future could look like. It's not the five or 10 years. It's really what I call strategic foresight, which is normally 20 years, 30 years out. What is the world going to look like? And then, you know, how do we position ourselves now? for 30 years from now and, and do work incre incrementally? So I feel like, as you know, the last 20 years uh, for West Canada, the last almost 47 years for West Global has been outstanding and I see an even better future with the passionate commitment uh, that we have uh, with, with everybody who works at West and, and our partners who are with us.